Welcome to devlog number 5. My name is Jason, game designer and environment artist on Hunters Uprising. Of course, as always, anything you see here is very much early work in progress and subject to change as we progress. We have had another fairly busy few weeks with our game, implementing multiplayer, replicating all our game mechanics to work correctly in multiplayer with further optimizations. So in today's devlog, I would like to cover those new items, plus go over some mechanics in more detail at several community members' request. Let's get started with vaulting, climbing and zip lines. Our maps are very varied with a lot of vertical ways of traversal for different routes around points of interest. Vaulting and climbing can get you onto and over most obstacles. You can even double jump higher surfaces and combine these to get around locations as if you're using parkour. Zip lines are our way of covering larger ground more quickly. We discussed faster mobility quite a lot and zip lines were our first concept, but we never showed them much. We can use these to get from a higher point to a lower as a way of joining a fight or to get away from one. So let's talk about our day and night cycle as well as weather. We are designing our extraction matches around a 45 minute match time. 30 minutes will be day and 15 minutes will be night with an on-screen warning that night is coming. This is so those that want to get out can, but if you want a more risk for reward experience, you can stay and become the hunted. Visibility during our nighttime can vary greatly also, from being pitch black and needing a flashlight to a more clear moonlit night sky, allowing you in most cases to see what's about to kill you. Come for your scope as well. As for our weather, it will be fully dynamic and random each match using a custom ultra dynamic weather and sky plugin. So you never know if you will have a foggy day, light rain, thunderstorm, or even a blizzard. This is all tied into our gameplay and will totally change how you choose to play, as sound will be as important as visual cues in Hunters Uprising and some weather types will effectively deafen you, but some, like snow, will allow you to track an enemy player's movement. Speaking of sound, our audio engineer and designers Dean and Avi are working hard on delivering immersive character audio, as you can hear in this early implementation, different surface footsteps and even gear rattles. I'll let the sound speak for itself. I've been meaning to talk a little about our AI and its basic behavior for a while. Our engineer Danny has been working on our AI so that it behaves more unique. Currently zombies are more of a nuisance that will lumber around until they spot you, then will track you until they lose sight for a few seconds. You can get a different reaction depending on where you shoot them, for instance a hit to the back will make them fall over and then struggle to get back up again. You may have also noticed our zombie audio cues so you know if that zombie is after your sweet sweet brains. The Wendigo is even more complex, as this will be our nocturnal folklore creature that hunts the player at night, but offers an additional bounty reward if killed successfully and extracted. The Wendigo will charge, back off and assess the situation, try to flank and even hide. Personally, I'm really looking forward to the Wendigo making it into builds and nighttime coming round to see players' first interactions with our Wendigo. Myself and Rabbit have been busy in the meantime building two new points of interest to explore. This is also where our multiplayer vertical slice is set for testing. So first up, the hospital that Rabbit has been building up and redesigning slowly. He has some ground floor design still to do to make it more unique, 
but it has an underground garage, a first floor, a second floor, and even roof access. The atmosphere we've been able to build with these hospital assets is insane. Just walking around and playing multiplayer deathmatch mode essentially has at times been really spooky. And as for the newer area that I've been working on, it's our first redwood biome point of interest, and it's a military complex plus underground bunker, which I like to refer to as the aliens room with its red lighting. Also, both of these points of interest will offer a unique central map extraction point, which we can reveal more on at a later date. There is much more that's being worked on to show in the future, but for now, that is all for devlog number 5. Of course, feel free to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, or join our game's Discord for some discussion or ideas you may have. We are extremely transparent and take on all feedback, good or bad. Links can be found in the description. Don't forget to hit that like button and share the video to help get our project known and wishlist Hunters Uprising on Steam now. But most of all, thank you for watching, and I'll see you peeps next time. <laughs> <laughs>